first 40 bomb in history. And it's kicking off at Grim Gate. Zero surprises. Well, I mean, there's not the EU strat. The EU strat seems to be start Underworld, go Grim Gate. Peterbot still going straight back. But I mean, this is his draw spot in duos too. So he knows it better than anyone. Look at that drop. Literally perfect drop. This kid has no idea who he's just tried to 50-50. Per pixel perfect drop to land directly on top of the chest for the auto pickup. We just, like, he's got this to it. Look at the loadout. My, what? Okay, my man already has two kills. Purple DMR, purple shotgun, extra meds, 160 health, and it's been five seconds since he's landed. Yeah, that's fair. That's balanced. That makes sense. Totally normal gameplay here. Bro, ridiculous. He's about, to clear, he's about to clear out the entire POI in less than, like, 30 seconds. One more. Oh, I'm guessing ZZZ clicks goes down and that's it. We have now cleared out Grimgate. Three kills with almost a full loadout of loot. And it has been under a minute. And we've even started the Grimgate boss as well. Bro, these players on the outskirts here are so confused. They've never seen this happen. They're like, this dude's got one assault rifle and shield bubble juniors. And this guy's got one assault rifle. Like, Peterbot knows his POI. To be fair, most of the players who drop their big games here in solos don't drop here in duos. Peterbot just drops here in everything. Solos, duos, ranks, literally everything. He drops here in scrims every single day with Poyo in duos, not just tournaments. Like, bro. The fact that he didn't do the strat to build the walls and pin Cerberus, like, inside the walls? Very, very surprising. Oh, looks like the third party is going to rotate in. This is this guy who had, like, no loot, though. I respect this guy's confidence to push with such bad loot. I guess he's just hoping he can steal the boss nice and quickly. Last time we checked, this guy had nothing for loot. He's... Oh, okay. He got a shotgun at least. And he's done enough to stall Peterbot now. So he's stalling Peterbot. Another player showed up as well. Peterbot's actually got to be careful now. Oh, Peterbot straight in with the cone. Beautiful piece control. Standard at this point from Peterbot. Nothing too fancy yet. That's four elims. And we're going to secure Cerberus very quickly. We've got another player rotating in, though. Got to be careful. There he is. Lands straight in the box. Wait a second. Did he grab the medallion? Wait, this player might have grabbed the medallion. I can't tell. Because he has the dashes, but he could have got them from the ground. Oh, he did. He stole the medallion. That could have been bad if he started running. All right, Peterbot. With, honestly, one of the best starts we've seen to one of these high kill games. Five elims. He has the medallion. There's still 76 people alive. This player is not looking the best already. Oh, 2 a.m. darts? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I haven't heard of this guy. Might be signed at 2 a.m. He's not doing a lot to peace control, though. He's not even putting cones on most of the boxes in. And he's not playing on a cone either. Not giving me the best confidence right now. My man's fighting on flats without a cone on his roof. He's decent. Okay, maybe he's just trying to... He might not expect he's versing Peterbot, honestly. That kind of play style works when you're versing a not as good opponent because it fakes them to peak. But my God, Peterbot... Oh my god. This guy's got a thousand earned. This guy is a pro. Oh my god. Well, this goes to show how much better Peterbot is. Holy crap, he made him look like a noob. He's got 10k earned? I mean, I'm not even saying that as an insult to him. It just shows how good Peterbot is. So whenever people whenever people watch like Marius, Peterbot, it's not even a region thing. I mean, most people make it a region thing. You watch, If you're an NA player and you watch Marius drop a 40, like a 39 kill. Oh, it's because EU is so bad. Look how bad these players are. And then if you're an EU player, you watch Peterbot. All oh, these players are so bad. They're just that good, man. They just make play. They just make other good players look that bad. All right, so we got six kills. We aren't rotating. We aren't rotating towards the underworld, interestingly. We aren't going to try and get the Cypher medallion. We're going to try and get more kills. Oh, here's the opponent out here. Oh, he's going for the weapon bunker. That is this the weapon bank bunker here? I'm interested. I'm intrigued to see why he's still carrying the DMR. Was there no assault rifle or anything else to carry? DMR is a very interesting choice from Peterbot. He's got three shots in his shotgun and then has essentially no follow-up. So he's got to manage his ammo perfectly here. This player's not looking the greatest, but he's stalling him out right now. Peterbot's playing safe. Good angle, though. Nice. This player is playing gun out. Best way to take down Peterbot. Hold your gun out and don't try to be too fancy. We have another player rotating in. A little third party. Ooh, this player's moving a little bit more, giving Peterbot a chance to try to peace control him. Still can't seem to find another player's rotating in right now. This could actually be good for Peterbot, this fight's dragging out. Because it's getting a lot of attention. All these players that otherwise could have ran and just spread out are all consolidating around this fight now. This 
fight is taking a lot longer than I would have imagined. See, only 67 alive now. The really good pace Peterbot had going is starting to slow down a bit now. It might be the DMR as well. He might be less confident fighting here without the DMR. Because if he misses a single shot, if he uses one shot to peace control a wall, then misses a shot, he, that's it. He's dead. He can't finish him. Oh. Peterbot with the aim, though. The hip fire DMR shot. And he's going to hold on to the DMR again. Do I think Peterbot could drop a 40? Do I think Peterbot could do this on EU? It's hard to say, man. If you watch the EU lobby, the, the average player is better. I will say that for sure. You watch Marius or even Swizzy. It, it, the players are on average better, but because the players are better, the end games stay more stacked, which gives you more chance to drop more kills. I think NA versus EU requires a different kind of play style. Both equally is impressive. I think on EU, you have to be able to beat an on average better player. But I think on NA, you have to be able to have the confidence and the, I don't know, the ability to just take people down instantly. Like, you have to be so much faster on NA. If you don't kill them on NA in rotating zones, everybody dies within, like, one zone. And the 40 bomb's impossible. I think they're just different regions with different playstyles, and they're both extremely impressive. Marius was on pace to drop a 50 bomb on EU today, though, and unfortunately went down. He got a 27 kill 31st. Ooh. So Peterbot, first one to get the 40 bomb. Officially done it, but the 50 bomb is actually on the cards, as insane as that is. Probably not on NA, though. Because, again, the NA lobbies just seem to die out so fast, it's near impossible. This is Peterbot's second solo cash cup on zero ping, though, as well. So that's obviously been the deciding factor in making that difference. And we now have 10 kills, 56 alive. We're carrying the bananas here as well. So three bananas, three med kits, and a mini. We're going to... Okay, we finally dropped the DMR. We're dropping the DMR for a pistol. So yeah, Peterbot not choosing to want to run the DMR. Peterbot always seems to push this way. He seems to always prioritize getting low grab and hitting the launch pad to find his next opponent rather than heading towards the underworld. He does it almost every single game. Oh, he's, he's only got the blue pistol now. So hopefully he can upgrade to something solid. This player doesn't have the dashes, which is going to help Peterbot a lot. I think he, he chooses... I think he likes to take his fights away from the new PYs. Because if you fight around Underworld and someone runs, they can just keep dash running from you forever. Or if you push out this way, a little bit safer. Oh my god. 17 HP. The gun out Gary almost takes down Peterbot. Just like that, the 40 bomb could be over. That's pretty much what happened to Marius, but it was an auto shotgun instead. Just goes to show how impressive these games are. The margins are so small. This player just had to hit one extra shot, and that's it. The 40 bomb's done. And there it is. We're going to gain. That's the hate. There we go. We got the Hades medallion, and we got the Mythic SMG, which explains probably why Peterbot was pushing this opponent. He specifically went for the low grab launch pad so he could chase down whoever had the siphon medallion. Peterbot pushing. He sees this big brick build, though. That's definitely going to mean someone's here. We got a three by one brick build. Nice. Oh, Jeffrey. Unfortunately, not putting up a great fight. Now the pacing is looking great. 12 Elims, 53 alive. Oh, almost gets jump scared. Jumps straight into the kid's face in the bush. He seemed pretty confident no one was in there. Didn't even spray or shotgun check it. Jumped straight in. I think his plan was to take the bush to then third party this other fight that was going on down by the river. Don't think he expected the bush to already be occupied. Oh, nice. Good dash positioning. Peterbot is getting more practice with the dash than basically anyone at this point. And oh my god, the dash piece control. Jeez. Nice. This player is doing their best to survive here. 28 tag. Peterbot trying to play those safe angles. The flop has been popped. Peterbot jumps in and takes down another one. Now we get to upgrade to the Fizzberry Jar as well. That should help a lot here for the rotations. Rift Island spawning in a very good spot here. He can use a lot of these rifts to key people, but it also means they can run from him using the rift. So he needs to be careful how he plays out around this mid-map. Oh. Closing the fights out quickly now. Looks like we took down a lot of the good opponents early. Do you have a three-way engagement going on over here? He needs to try to get involved in that before they all go down. They're all on top of the launch pad as well. 
Oh, okay, they're disengaging. Peterbot might only think there's one play here, though. He's got to be careful of that player sitting in the cone. Oh, beautiful wall take. And he slides the cone over the top as well. Peterbot trying to gain, trying to gain some kind of foothold in this fight. This panda guy is putting up a good fight right now, though. I think Peterbot's managed to hear the other opponent. Maybe, I'm not sure. Maybe not, actually. Peterbot happened to play a bit more aggressive now. Jumping straight and he gets out again. This Panda player, honestly, quite competent. Goes down mostly because of the build grid on the roof there. Peterbot forces him out across the roof where he can't build. Peterbot knows he was fighting someone. He's in the roof. There he is. Finds him in the roof. That one's definitely not going to have the accusers happy. My man finds him in the roof. I'm going to have to guess that he heard that he was third partying someone, but... Here they come. There we go. There are the comments. So I haven't said in any of my videos watching Peterbot and kids get triggered, but if Peterbot's cheating, then there's basically no point in me devoting my life to competitive Fortnite. If someone can go this long competing at this level without Epic banning them, then I just need to give up and stop watching this game. I have to have enough faith in Epic's anti-cheat, but they would have found him by now. If someone cheats and makes it to a tournament and, you know, they get banned a week later or they maybe qualify for two tournaments, like, you know... It's an open format for tournaments. Anyone can play. That's bound to happen. For someone to have won an FNCS, qualified for multiple lands, played for literally years at this level, if you can get away with cheating that long, then I'm going to give up watching Fortnite because there's no point. There's no competitive integrity and it's not worth watching. You know what I mean? That's, that's my point. That's my view on it. So if you want to know why I don't accuse Peterbot of cheating, I hate witch hunting because we've had... Multiple pros in the past that people have sworn are cheating who have been conclusively proven to not cheat. So it's literally happened before. But secondly, if he is cheating, my whole view of this game is ruined. And there's just no point even watching it. That's my take. You can take it if you want. If you think he's cheating, I don't really care. Oh. Nice. There we go. Very nice. All right, 18 kills. Really good loadout. Literally perfect loadout right now. Name the other pros. I mean, Dubs is the best example. The whole community thought Dubs was cheating, so Epic Games had to release an official statement themselves saying that they have, they've they've investigated Dubs and he is not cheating. So that would be the most public and best example. All right, 18 kills with 42 remaining. So we've got, we've got really good pace going right now. And there's a lot of players in this area. There's a lot of players inside the reels here. Oh my God. So many people are just based up hiding here inside restored reels. Look at this. What the hell? Why are so many people here specifically? What is going on? This lobby was like the perfect lobby. No one's fighting each other. They're all just sitting here. I guess it's just buildings to hide inside of. Everyone wants to hide in buildings, but they don't want to look obvious because then you're going to get keyed. I don't know. I don't know if Peterbot plays these games with anonymous mode on or off. If you played it with anonymous mode off, it might make the lobby play really passive and scared to just trying to hide and avoid him. Oh, I sound Cole FN. Has the chance to upgrade to the gold shotgun, but again, no surprise there. Peterbot is very much meaning the gatekeeper shotgun this season. I wonder if he knows how many players are inside restored reels right now. He can see a lot of bases though. Now he gets to just take his pick of who he wants to key. Wood is usually going to be the best indicator. If you're trying to, if you've got five people boxed up and you want to know which one of them is the one to key, the kid sitting in a single layer of wood, usually a good sign. Oh, 22. He's doing it fast now. This pacing is beautiful. Absolutely fantastic pacing for the 40 bomb right now. Interesting, so that player was boxed up. He knew they were there in the box. Then he goes for the other wall. He goes for the environmental side of the wall, the one that he can't edit or can't shoot out of. So Peterbot in the last two days has broken a world record for the amount of points scored in a duo cash cup opens with Poyo. Has then broken an all-time record winning five of six games in a set lobby finals. Only realistically losing the six because they got griefed by a quadruple contestant. They could have won six from six. And then has been the first player to ever drop a 40 bomb in a victory finals the next day. Like, just insane, man. One of the most dominant primes we've ever seen of any player. If they do well in grands, if they win grands, then this is going to be the most dominant season I think a, a, a pro or a team has ever had. This is the season to do it, though. 
this Cerberus Medallion is, I think, up there. I think the Cerberus Medallion is only in line with the Caddy Launcher for the strongest item we've ever had in Fortnite. The way it lets you play the game differently to everyone else is just so important. It's not just a gun that does a bit more damage. Like, it lets you play the game literally differently. Like, uh, there's you are the only player in the lobby can do what he's doing. The only other time we've had a gun like that is the Caddy Launcher. Maybe the Infinity Blade, but, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to see a bit of a build battle height here. We haven't seen too much height fighting from Peterbot. Almost everything's just a box fight. So as soon as he puts pressure on them, everyone boxes up. It's insane how defensive the average player is these days. Ooh, the lobby focus comes out. Peterbot? This is the worst Peterbot's looked so far. I mean, he got taken down to low health earlier, but this has wasted a lot of his time. He has spent so much time on this fight. The pressure's on. He's still spending even more time on it. He's only got the Fizzberry Jar as well. No Shield Fish, no Mini, so he can't pop these heals quickly. He needs to find time and create space. And looks like that counter damage from the pump is what's going to give him the time to finally pop this Fizzberry. Little does that player know that was probably... The worst thing you could have done. He probably should have just kept pushing him even on low health to just try and one-pump him. And Peterbot disengages. He's going to go after an easier opponent. That person he was fighting there put up a good fight. He respects it, acknowledges it, and wants to find someone who's a little bit easy to take down. Oh, gets another kill stolen. So he's actually lost two free kills this game as well. So this could have been a 43-kill game at this point. All right, this is the player that put up a good fight earlier. Peterbot trying to find a way in. Doesn't have these walls. Pins him in. He tries to wait till he resets the wall so he knows it's weak and pump take it. Peterbot, I think acknowledging that player is putting up a really solid fight is probably worth just either holding him or going for someone else. Oh, nice shot. First SMG with the laser mag. Proving absolutely lethal in Peterbot's hands right now. You can see why he drops the mythic SMG for this. The, one of the first phase-ins we've seen this whole game, I've just realized. Peterbot's dropped 25 kills. That's one of the first times he's actually phased in or jumped in a box. Zone pulls towards that southwest section. So it's pulling up the hill. No crazy elevation, no water. Always a very good sign when you're coming into these end games. If you're trying to drop a high kill game, the last thing you want is a difficult end game for, for bad players. Anything that can kill bad players that isn't you is a bad thing. But Peterbot goes down to 40 HP again. This is where a lot of these big games come unstuck on the rotating zones. Peterbot knows he's on pace to win it, but if he slows down too much on rotating zones, he's going to lose it. But you push too hard, you make the mistake, and you go down like Marius, and you also lose it. That's another kill stolen as well, by the way. That's three kills now that have been stolen from him. Maybe the 50 bomb will be possible on NA. It's very much possible on EU. We'll see if Peterbot can do it on NA. I can't believe we're talking about, about a potential 50 bomb race now. Oh, replay lag a little bit there. We get another one. Oh, gets ahead of him. Player doesn't drop the front wall quick enough, trying to get into zone. 29 kills with 20 alive. So he only gets 12 of the next 19. I say only. That is still extremely good, but there's room for more. There is room for more. I don't want to be greedy. I don't want to, like, you know, already be looking for the next thing. I'm going to appreciate what we have. The first 40 bomb victory cup win, but wow. This was like a comfortable 40 bomb at this point. Player goes down to zone. We're going to get credit for that one, luckily. The fact that it's possible for a player to be good enough to kill half a lobby in a tournament is absurd. Oh, nice shot. That player's really weak, though. He could lose that kill. That could be another one getting stolen. Peterbot doesn't even invest the time keying that player. He's just hit down to 10 white. He's just looking for new targets. So Peterbot's got a new way for him to play these end games. I feel like Peter before would have just honed in on that player and really tried to box fight them wall to wall. It looks like he's getting better at identifying when it's just not worth it. Let the kills come to you. Because as you can see, they come fast. If you can get them before they box up. Peterbot going to try and split up this fight. He needs to try to deny this kill from getting taken by someone else. Nice. Gets in. That's kill number 33. Seven to go. Really good material. He's going to make his first play for high ground now. Going to do a bit of a hype build battle. Nice dash. He's gotten the timing down on the dash so well. So many of the players, they try to dash above opponents, mess up the height. Oh, as I talk about the perfect dash. Nice. 35. 
So he gets he gets six of the next seven kills. Oh, this player, unfortunately, not too aware of their surroundings. I feel like that was pretty obvious Peter Ball was going to go for that, but he was focused on the rotate. Can't blame him. Probably looking at the kill feed and noticing there's an anonymous player who's dropping a lot of kills. Jamaican Jeff. Oh, go down to 94 HP. Wait a second. We've only got two splashes. We don't have that many fast heals. We're going to have to sit here and pop the Fizzberry jar now. And reload. Wait a second. Peterbot. Peterbot hears the player getting killed. Knows that every kill matters right now. Doesn't even wait to pop his Fizzberry. Rushes him on 100 health. And the Siphon tops him up. Peterbot. This is the kind of play style I was talking about earlier in the video. You need to have this play style for NA. It might not be the smartest, but you have to risk it. That's 39. Two players left. At this point, Peterbot's got to start feeling pretty confident. Even if one of these players kills the other, as long as he doesn't lose the 1v1. The 40 bomb's all his. Nice. He's got them split up as well, so he knows they're not going to fight unless they drop down. There it is. The 40 bomb, but it doesn't count unless you win it. It's the unofficial rules. 1v1. 40 kills in a solo victory cup finals in a tournament when elims don't matter is when we finally saw players and pros really push the limits of how many kills can you get in a tournament this guy's going for the build battle I, I respect that my man's desperate though he's got to know he's outmatched but he's trying he's going down swinging Peterbot's not risking it either Peterbot knows he can take his time now it's a 1v1 no one can ruin it but him and it's a 41 kill win. The first 40 bomb ever for Peterbot. Oh boy.